Okay, so can I ask you what? Because uh, obviously you you said when I approached you, you said that your parents are Muslims, but you're not sure, or you're, and obviously you're not wearing a hijab. Although it's yeah. not it's not mandatory, but can I ask you quite honestly? Because you're anonymous anyway. Obviously we're filming you from behind, but what? Why? What? what why? You're not so sure. Is there anything that um, I am Muslim, but I wouldn't say that you can tell you see me because I don't wear hijab into his head. So, but my parents are very strict, and my mom wears a hijab, so that's why I said my parents are more Muslim. Is there noise going to be an issue, by the way, to pick up? Can we send a little bit back, just a little bit? Sorry, because I'm just conscious that it's a beautiful music. But so, is it like, because, uh, you know, what do you think, for example, about the, the women in Iran and what's going on with them? Because you don't wear a hijab. Yeah. What do you think? Because, you know, obviously they're Shia, I don't know what's your background. Most Muslims are Sunni, but what do you think about that, since you don't wear a hijab? It's, you know, and it's a um, Muslim country. I feel like, it's not a choice in Islam, it's mandatory, but you should come to the choice yourself. Mm -hmm. So I don't agree with what's happening, also because I heard that the politicians have daughters that live in the Western world and they do not wear hijab, they don't dress modestly, so that's kind of hypocrite as well. Uh -huh. So it's, it's, not, it's not very good. I agree with the women and um, them manifesting. Yeah. So do you, do you think it's a lot to do, because my understanding, right, is that um, there are some genuine Muslim people and, you know, but obviously there are genuine people everywhere, but my understanding with Islam that it's a lot to do with the outside, right? So you pray five times a day and you wear a hijab and in Islam you're taught to hide your sin, right, and to not disclose it, but it's a lot to do with the outer appearance. What about the inside of a person? I feel like your outer appearance also affects your inner appearance. Um, if, you're modest, if you're a modest person on the inside, Islam wants you to show it on the outside as well. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, I, mean, I, I hear what you're saying. I find it really difficult because, for example, what are your thoughts on that? Um, on Muhammad, what are, your thoughts, what are your thoughts on Prophet Muhammad, for example? Um, Do you know much can you about be more specific? Like in the sense, for example, you know, um, you know, he he said you shouldn't. I mean, uh, is it Muhammad that said no sex before marriage, for example? In his Muhammad life? didn't say that. Is it Muhammad, Muhammad said you can take four wives. Yeah, you can take four and wives. He had about eleven wives. Himself. Yeah, he had eleven wives himself. So. Um, and also, you know, um, just there the seems to be hypocrisy, basically, you know, and uh, um, I don't know, what are your thoughts about this, you know, in terms of what I'm trying to say to her is that in Islam, there seems to be a lot about outer appearance. I mean, ultimately, in Islam, women are work? deficient in minds. Women are less in Islam. For example, it says in Surah 2, or, or yeah. chapter 2, verse 200, sorry, chapter 2, verse 233, yeah, it says basically that what, your women are a tool, so go into them anytime you want. So you as a woman in Islam, I mean, if I married you, I'm not saying, oh, not saying that. So, but basically, like, right, in that situation, right, I would have the right to have sex with you whenever I so please. It also says in the, the Quran that the testimony of, of one man is equal to that of two women. This is also in chapter two of the Quran, right? And you can look up yourself if you want to. So I'm not very aware of that. Um, I never heard of it before. Definitely. Maybe um, you can show the reference. Yeah, yeah I'll show the reference. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, another one I've heard is, uh, you know, in term, because some Muslims say oh, women have, you know, more rights in Islam, but what I heard is that uh, if a woman gets raped, um, she would need four male witnesses, kind of going along the line with what my friend John said. Um, but basically, you know, um, you know, you, you seem like a cultural Muslim, and so we want to share the message. Once he gets this passage, I want to share the message of the cross with you. Basically, we're Christians, and uh, we were not born Christians, you know, and um, we found the truth in Jesus Christ. Uh, do you know much about Jesus Christ? No. So 
So do you know that the Jesus in the Quran is not the same as in the Bible? Yes, he's regarded as a prophet, but he's not the son of God. Mm -hmm. do, what do you think, do you know what is salvation in Christianity? No. I heard about it, but I'm not. No. Yeah. So do you, what is, do you know what salvation in Islam is? You I know? have heard anyone using that word for Islam. I hear it when it comes to Christians, mm -hmm. salvation, yeah. Yeah, I mean, basically, there is a, is a major difference. Like in, uh, in Islam, for example, uh, Muslim people believe they can be saved by their good deeds. So they believe that if they follow the five pillars of Islam, um, they will be saved, basically, or they will go to heaven, which doesn't even seem like a nice place anyway for a woman, because in the sense that for a man you can get many women, and um, for a woman you get to have your husband, but you don't really get to have him anyway, because he has other women. Um, in, um, in Christianity, however, you know, we, are, you know, we acknowledge that we are sinners and our deeds cannot save us. And because we are born into sin, um, we can only be redeemed through Jesus Christ, um, who is the Son of God and who died on the cross for us. And by his stripes we are healed. Now, Islam portrays a different Jesus and it, it, it denies the message of salvation. It tells you that Jesus wasn't God and Jesus wasn't crucified, which is exactly what you need to be saved. So, what did you find the verse? Yeah, I found the verse. Well, basically, it's this. This is um, chapter 2, verse 282 of the Quran. Look there. There it is. Do you want me to read it out to you? So that, yeah. yeah, I'll read it out to you. So basically it says, Oh you who believe, when you contract a debt for a fixed period, write it down. Let a scribe write it down in justice between you. Let not the scribe refuse to write as Allah has taught. So let him write. Let him, the debtor, who incurs the liability to dictate, and he must fear Allah his Lord, and diminish not anything of what he owes. But if the debtor is of poor understanding or weak, or is unable himself to dictate, then let his guardian dictate justice and get two witnesses out of your own men. Right, two ways I And if there are not two men available, then get a man and two women, such as you agree for witnesses, so that one of them, two women, as the other can remind her. So basically, what this is basically telling you, telling us, is that two women are supposed to judge for this situation at hand. No, sorry, two men are supposed to judge for this situation. Huh? But if you can't find two women, two men, you're supposed to get two women and one man. So what, what this is basically telling me is that the, the testimony of two women is equal to one man. Okay, Does I'm not that make too sure about that. I feel like in Islam, in the Quran, um, it can be interpreted in, a different, in different ways. In what so, way would you interpret, interpret that verse? I don't know, I don't have no idea. I would need a little bit more of time to think about that. But okay, I'm sure if I went on the internet and searched um, this chapter, I would have imams saying their opinions and actually justifying why they think that's true. Well, I would say this, sister, because ultimately, like, when, we, when we look at the Quran, we also, we also have interpretation of the Quran, correct? So what, what, better, what better interpretation would have than what the Prophet says? Right? So, have you heard of Hadith? Um, he did not interpret it. No, he did. So I mean, there's, there's um, hadith attributed to Muhammad. That's not his words, it's the words of God, so he did not say that himself. But oh, is, no, no, no. is it the word of God? Because Muhammad never heard from God, he heard from Jibreel. So, so yeah, it's yeah, not actually the word heard from God. Yeah. And about what you said before about salvation in Christianity, I think that I agree more um, with the salvation in Islam, because yeah. your deeds describe the person you are. And to continue sinning, and to act badly does not make you a good person. Mm. And to rely on Jesus to for salvation, I think that's not right. Do, do, so do you do you think you're a good um, person? Well, you, I just want to just want to put it in, and you, you don't have a conversation because I don't want to just drag yeah. it. Sure, sure. I'm just going to read out what I had to say because what I want to do is what I want to do before it being interrupted was to hone in on the point that the fact that the Quran does teach. In fact, that women are deficient in mind. And what I was essentially showing is that verse itself shows that two two female witnesses are equal to that one man. But I'm going to go on to what. what but what was the um? What do they need to judge in that chapter? So what? So they were. So let me let me show you again. Actually, 
Let me get up. So like, the, what's, the, what's the context? The context is, so, it, and I'll read it to you again. Oh, you believe when you contract a debt for a fixed period, so it was a debt for a fixed period, right? Mm -hmm. Write it down. Let a scribe write it down in justice between you. Let not the scribe refuse to write as Allah has taught him, so let him write. Let the debtor who incurs the lie be to dictate, and he must fear that Allah is law. But if the debtor is poor, poor with understanding, or weak, or is unable himself to dictate, then let his guardian dictate justice and get two witnesses. So you, you are to witness this man basically be like uh, dictating a debt, basically. And, okay, so, and so basically, we're talking about something that involves intelligence, basically. It makes sense because intelligence is fermented by education, and if you see the history of women, they do not have access to equal access to education as men, especially back then. Mm -hmm. So they will not work, they will be wives, have children. That's just the way it happened. Even if the Quran doesn't agree that way, women were just wives and mothers. So but I, I would say ultimately this isn't just for one day, sister. This this if you're talking about the Quran, the Quran is for all time. Yeah, but so that means even to justify that realistically, but, if you're talking about death, we're talking about work and money and men used to be in that field. So I understand what they mean when they say get to men because they're kind of generalizing the situation. But what they're saying is that basically in that situation they could have got basically another man, but they didn't. Instead they got two females and one man. So they're basically saying like two two females is equal to that. In, in this case one man. But what, um, let me let me continue, right? So to go to call on this first, because it's talking about this first, right? This is Muhammad's opinion on what women are. It says here, Sahih al Bakari 304, narrated Abu Sa'id al Qudri. Once Allah's Messenger went out to the Muslim to offer the prayer of Al Adha or Fit Al Fitr prayer, then he passed by the women and said, Oh women, give arms, as I have seen, sorry, as I have seen that the majority of dwellers of Hellfire are you women. They asked, Why? Why is it? Sorry. Ugh. That's quite yeah. a statement to make. A yeah, 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 it is. <laughs> it's quite hard. As I've seen, the majority of the dwellers of Hellfire were you women. They asked, why is it so? Allah's messenger, he replied, you curse frequently and are ungrateful to your husbands. I've not seen anyone more deficient in intelligence and religion than you. So Allah's not just saying you're deficient in intelligence, so he's saying this you're in deficient this in, in the religion. Quran? No, this is in the hadith attributed to Muhammad. Okay, so if it's not in the Quran, it's not the word of God, and it's not Islam. It may not be the word of God, but most Muslims are not perfect. They don't I, always see the, yeah. they don't always see perfectly. So as so you if said, it's not in the Quran. It's not the word of God. So you so don't. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. so you don't so believe you, in you, the hadiths then. Sorry. I mean, yeah, yeah, I, I was going to say, as you said, sister, most as you pointed out yourself, right? When women would have been educated the same way as men would, right? So they would have needed some other way to understand or to come to fundamental knowledge. What we're saying is that the hadith attributed to Muhammad were written by the scholars who followed him and the scholars himself dictate what the religion of Islam is. So when you go to a scholar and an imam, you're essentially doing what the hadith is doing. The hadith is giving you what Muhammad said, these were, the, the way these were to be interpreted. So when, we, when, when, when you read hadith, According to any Sunni, you can go up to those Sunnis on there on that store, you can ask them themselves. They would accept hadith. They have to. And, it, and I, I don't know whether you're Sunni or not. I think you mentioned mm -hmm. your, your you cult. You follow Prophet Muhammad. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if you follow Prophet Muhammad, historically, the sources attributed to him, not, not ones are made up, but sources attributed to his sayings, are saying this. Now, you can reject them, but the problem is if you reject them, then you're, rejected, you're rejecting the Muhammad of the Quran, the same Muhammad you're claiming to want to follow. I mean, if you're not rejecting something in the Quran, then you're not rejecting anything. Um, no, well, you would be rejecting the seed of the prophets, because ultimately, mm -hmm. Muhammad essentially is the one but the who... But the prophets are not God. Mm -hmm. They're not God, but they're the ones who reveal God to us. So the perfect revelation of God has to come from the prophets. But because if, we can't it's, not, if it's not from God, it's not their word, it's mm -hmm. their interpretation and their opinions. Yeah, but it wouldn't, then, we're not talking about their in terms of sister, you got to understand. Prophets themselves are not like us. We as, we're not prophets. We, if, if I say that God has said something, I've got to be a prophet. Otherwise, I'm just speaking out of my behind. You understand? Yeah. So ultimately, prophets are the ones who are entitled to, to receive revelation from God and give it to us. Ultimately, they have to be perfect perfect beings themselves or they at least have to in some way perfect that religion for us so we can understand as human beings what i'm saying is even the quran says that it is hadith itself so if the quran itself is an hadith and i'm talking about hadith sayings of muhammad there's not a problem with muhammad himself writing sayings writing them down attributed to himself what's going on yeah. we're next to the casino
Yeah, the, so it's our ultimate system. Because, you know, opposite the hadith friends, are just opposite as important in the Quran according to mainstream Islam. You. Not according to me, I'm not making I'll this up. Text you. The hadith are saying that you as a Muslim woman are deficient in mind and you are going to be the majority in health work. You have to make that decision. What, do you accept that or do you reject hadith? If you reject the hadith, then you're rejecting mainline Sunni scholarship and you're rejecting most of Islam according to most Muslims. No, I, I don't believe that. I mean, you can interpret, interpret it a different way. But as I said before, I'm not really educated when it comes to prophets and hadith. So I can't really give a reasoning, but I'm sure if you found someone that knew what you're talking about, they would have an explanation about so it. I, 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 know, I understand that. So I want to read from the Quran, because you're telling me if it's from God, then essentially it's, it's final. So I, I want to read what the Quran says. This is, in, this is specifically about women. So this is Surah 2, 223, right? I want to read it. Sorry, one minute, Amy. I'm just getting it up. Because um, it just takes ages to load up. Yeah, there we go. So, one, one minute, Amy. One minute. Um, so, yeah. So, this is what it says, yeah? Your women are a till for you. So, go, so go into the, your till as you will and send good deeds before your, you for your souls and fear and all. And know that you will one day meet him. Give that blind believers, right? This verse is literally con con condoning marital rape. And there's no other way to get around it because there's no other way to say somebody's a tilf. If I say my wife is a tilf and I am to go into her whenever I want to, it's clear that Allah has given me an indication to go into a woman whenever I want to. So would you agree with that? Um, honestly, I didn't really hit. Uh, can you read that again? Okay, yeah. so I'll read it again. Sorry, one minute. Uh, so it's just two, two, two. Uh, I have, I have to go, I have to be somewhere for eight. Yeah, so it's Surah 2, 223, you can read it there, it's in the Quran, it's not, I'm not hiding anything. I hold it for... Yeah, you can hold it, it's mine. Well. Yeah. It. So it says, your wife are as tilt unto you, so approach your tilt when and how we will, but do some good, act for your souls beforehand and fear Allah, and you are to meet him in thereafter and give these good tidings to those who believe. Yeah. But that's, I, that's, I was just gonna say, madam, you know, just very briefly, can I conclude? Because she has to do. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm gonna just say this, and I'm gonna just go. Okay, go on. I don't really, okay. So ultimately, like, I yeah, understand you. you don't understand that verse, but what yeah. I would say is, it's detrimental to you if you're gonna follow Islam. There's many verses I, I can bring to you, sister, mm -hmm. that that shows that not only does does the, the Quran condone pedophilia, mm -hmm. and I can show that from the Quran, but the Quran condones beating women. That's Surah uh, Surah 4, 34 beating a woman and and there's many other verses that can show you sister mm -hmm. if you wish to go into it but because there's both of us i don't really want to yeah. this I mean, tension I, I look of... into it when i go home i will ask my dad yeah. because he knows so, he, he, yeah. he knows the quran he knows the interpretation of the quran oh. so i will ask if, him if it does so what, what we need to ask him is what does Surah 4 verse 34 say that's an important question what does Surah 4 verse 4 say look up what does Surah 4 424 say about owning sex slaves that's an important one and, uh, and the other one is what does Surah 65 verse 4 say about divorcing children those are the three things if you're willing to look them up i don't mind yeah them. i mean I, I was just gonna say yeah i mean um is that they don't have them okay uh this is for you to read uh it's just a track about jesus you can read it in your own time but yeah basically um yeah unfortunately you know the ideology behind islam is not good this is why nowadays um you have men marrying children because of what Muhammad did. I mean, some people say, oh, back in the day, you know, they find excuses, say that uh, it was normal or girls grew up faster, but it still happens today, um, you know. Because it happens today, but it's more cultural. Yeah, but it, it does it does come from that. And uh, there is a lot of mistreatment, but in Christianity, you know, uh, there is equality between men and women. Um, so actually, uh, women, uh, men are called to uh, love women as Christ loved the church and gave his life for her. And, um, you know, it says that there is no male and female, but one in Christ Jesus. And also, I want you to think about this in terms of sex in heaven. Um, you know, considering that Judaism and Christianity, they come before Islam, there was no sex in heaven. The, um, so this idea um, that man can have this um, is, is basically satanic because it, it, it doesn't come from a previous religion. So in the Bible it is written that um, uh, basically um, 
In Matthew 22, 30, it says, For in the resurrection, neither they marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Um, and it, it kind of goes along um, these lines. I mean, what do you think about that, for example, in terms of um, sex in heaven? Because, like, the Quran confirms through the scripture, but no, like, we didn't believe in this. And it kind of appeals to the lust of man. Do, do you see my point? Is What do you think about this? So what does it say about sex in heaven? There is no sex in heaven. Oh, Islam test in, in Islam it says there is sex in heaven and it actually in the Quran, if you want to hear about the Quran specifically, it tells you that um, you know the man will have quarries that no one touched before, quarries with beautiful eyes like hidden pearls. Um, now for a man it sounds really appealing because it appeals to his lust. Um, but, you know, truthfully, it's not um, appealing for a woman, is it? And it's not from God, because something that is from God is not something that would be harmful. Um, it's not, um, you know, I mean, would you like if you got married and, you know, you have to share your husband for eternity with all these women and can be up to 72 virgins? I mean, a man may be seduced by that and think, oh yeah, I like that. But it's not, it's not actually the truth and um, it's not something women agree with. Even with polygamy, you know, um, something that Islam allows. Uh, I mean, I've looked into it and Muslim women are not happy, but they have to submit. In, in Christianity, we believe that... They, they don't have to, because Islam says that if your first wife does not agree for this partner to get a second wife, then she will not get a second wife. Well, I've spoken to Muslim men about this. Obviously, people have different interpretations, but Muslim men, they can actually marry in secret. And what happens is they can even use women. Um, but I, I just want to leave you with the message of the cross before you go, that basically, um, in Christianity, you find cleanliness and you find truth, and um, you cannot save yourself. God can save you, and by uh, by the blood of Jesus, you're saved. You can receive the Holy Spirit. And when we go to heaven, there is no sex, there is no alcohol, no alcohol. You know, there is no things. There is just God, and we worship God in spirit and in truth. So, I can I pray for you before you go? A prayer is a prayer. Yeah, thank you, Heavenly Father. I thank you for this open-minded lady and I pray Lord that you will reveal the truth to her I understand she respects her family's background and she respects her father and what he believes in but Lord um, despite of this um, she may have been born in the wrong religion and maybe this is not true and I and I trust Lord that you will reveal the truth to her that only Jesus can save her and only Jesus Christ with the Lord coming to flesh can give her the Holy Spirit. He wasn't just a prophet. He didn't run from a cross. He, he was crucified so that people can be healed and receive the Holy Spirit and get saved. And I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.